Should I take it on an airplane if I'm going overseas or domestic? Short answer, don't do it. Yes, you can bring them in your checked luggage and no, you cannot bring them in your carry-on luggage, except sometimes. So in Europe, I've been going from Germany, somewhere in France, and then to, uh, where was it? Where they run the bulls, Pamplona. And we didn't have any checked luggage, so we just brought foldable leckies, and I had another kind, not these ones, but similar. And it was totally fine, one flight, totally fine the second flight, totally fine the third flight, but on the last connection, guess what they did? They confiscated them and threw them away. So while you sometimes are at the whim of whatever TSA and whatever country you're in, their rules about trekking poles, um, the safe bet is to just not bring them as carry on. Number one, there's some discussion that if you have a rubber tip like this one, it can protect you. And that's kind of how we got away with it when we were going to the Camino. So the question is, okay, then, you know, just buy a checked bag. Well, that can cost you upwards of a hundred dollars easily, even just for a short connection flight within Europe. USA is a little bit different, but similar kind of thing. So considering that you're probably going somewhere for a nice long hike or even a short one, you don't want to be lugging around a whole bunch of extra luggage just so that you can have a checked bag. So my suggestion would be, Number one, don't even check them because things like these ultra lightweights, they get broken in luggage quite a bit. The other thing is the checked luggage often just doesn't show up in time. It gets lost somewhere. So what a waste of time and money and stress. <clears throat> Keep your fancy poles for home or where you can drive. Love them, love them, love them. Definitely not a nunchuck, despite what they say. Find somewhere where you can just buy a cheap pair of, of poles wherever you're going on your trek. It probably won't make that much difference. Often you find them left. For example, mine broke on the Tour de Mont Blanc and I actually found this one. It's kind of like at the ski resorts when people leave the poles, they get set up against the fence and it's sort of a pay it forward kind of thing. Okay, that's my tutorial on trekking poles and airplanes. And yes, a big fan of trekking poles. And even just one trekking pole, if you're used to having two, sometimes even just one can make a difference. The store where you can find cheap trekking poles in Europe specifically is called Decathlon. D-E-C-A-T-H-O-N, Decathlon. And they're pretty much everywhere. It's like the Walmart of, of like REI, but cheaper. And they're pretty much located everywhere you find big trails. All right, so for any more information about hiking in Europe, specifically all the cool trails, or trekking poles. As a PT, a physical therapist, I am obsessed with anything that can make hiking easier and less troublesome on your knees or ankles or feet or whatnot. And personal story, I had trekking poles, these ones, and one of them broke. So I actually ended up only using one. And then I found this one for the last day of the trip but I'd kind of gotten used to just using one and preferred it actually. And that was crazy amount of elevation every day, up, down, very rocky, and going with fast people. And my feet were fine. Then the following week, whether it was just accumulation of trauma from the week before, that could be the case, but we did the Via Transylvanica, awesome trail, very soft, went with kids, and I had no trekking poles because we flew and we, when we fly, we only, we never check bags. And lo and behold, I think I got a tiny stress fracture in my foot. <laughs> Bottom line, go to my website, cravetheplanet.com and there are tutorials, videos, buying guides, etc. Everything you would ever want to know about trekking poles. Thank you so much for watching and please like and subscribe.